I really like District 9 as well, but I think the idea that the main character is surprised by what happens misses the, the key drama to it. Why, why was this better? I mean, there's so many conspiratorial movies come up where, you know, you're going along, you think things are fine, and then suddenly you unclose that there's some deep conspiracy in there. <clears throat> and oftentimes in these movies, what you get is you get a huge explanation. For example, when the Matrix reloaded, when the, um, the architect describes to Neo what's happening, Okay, you have to be told as the audience what's really happening. And that's what kind of why, where I felt after that the movie started losing it because you thought something was happening and then suddenly something very bizarre comes up, something that you didn't suspect. You don't really have to have that explained to you in District 9 because quite simply the main character knew what was happening all along. We all know what's happening in the District 9. We all know what's happening in Iraq. We all know what's happening in Mexico. We all know what's happening in the Third World. We all know what's happening in sweatshops in China. We all know what's happening in sweatshops in India. The thing is, it doesn't impact us. And we try to create a fantasy space clinging to our careers, our opportunities, our benefits, our loyalties to our organization, and muddle through. We could identify immediately with, first of all, the protagonist's situation, and then secondly, we didn't need any explanation whatsoever for the protagonist. In fact, no one even told the protagonist that actually they were moving everybody to a concentration camp. He presents that himself. He was never told that. What activated this knowledge is not what he learns. He doesn't really learn anything. What he learns is he learns how to be one of the people in District 9. He, it is a process of the object, in this personified as these, these uh, insects who are also given all of these kind of uh, classist and racist stereotypes, that we see this person trying, he thinks he's being a good person, he's going through the system, but he knows, just as we know all along, what's really going on, okay? Because we don't like these inconvenient, impoverished humans who are somehow thrust on this world with us. We don't like the family of Mexican immigrants who are struggling to make a living. In the UK, we don't like the gypsy family down the street that may be living ten to the house. We, we want that to become invisible to us. We construct District 9s. We other them, okay? We place them behind a barrier. We objectify them. And what happens in this movie, using the CGI, which is a very interesting effect, is that the protagonist becomes the other. And all the knowledge that we already have already kicks in. And this is, you know, effectively you could show us almost any American, what would your life be like if all of a sudden you woke up and you were African American? And almost every white person, very, very few, I mean, only the most racist white people, will have any delusion that their life is about to get a lot more difficult. If they would just happen to wake up one morning and the pigment of their skin increased. Okay? We know these particular things. And this is, you know, we, I know we're reading about this, Aristotle, Aristotle and Mortimer Adler. These are things these, Aristotle didn't deal with. This is postmodernism. Dude, the movie had power because it's a postmodernist masterpiece for film. It is looking at culture and the way that we use imagination to construct identities identities that we attach to and identities of others and how we try to in a fantasy world create an identity that we feel comfortable with knowing perfectly well what's really going on so you know all this about aristotle this is a movie 
This isn't Aristotle. This isn't Plato's cave where he's, you know, so many conspiracy movies are Plato's cave where you, you're taken out and suddenly you see something you didn't imagine. He knew the protagonist in District 9 knew. He even presents at the end. He even says at the end. No one told him. He said, well, actually, it's a concentration camp. He knew it from the beginning. He knew exactly what was going on, just as most Germans knew what was going on with the Jews, just as we know what's going on in the factories in China that make our iPads. We know what's happening in the sneaker factories. We know what's happening in the call centers in India. We know what's happening in the mining productions in Africa. We know, okay? It's just, there's not a matter of knowledge or learning. The thing is, is that we can't see ourselves as them because we imagine ourselves, we construct an identity and we objectify these other people. They become the other. They become distant from us and as a threat and we can't emulate or feel in our own imaginations what they're going through. What was brilliant about District 9 is it was a very thinly veiled metaphor for the globalization. And it just very straightforward, simply says, let's imagine the most extreme other. Let's take a protagonist who is your typical business guy. He's got his family. He's got his job. He loves his wife. He's trying to muddle through an oppressive system of exploitation. And let's just switch it so that for one reason, he becomes the other. And the audience didn't have to have it explained to them. They, you never are sitting there going, why are they doing this? Or what's going on? Or what is really, you don't learn about secret government organizations. All the players, no new players are introduced. It's the same company in the end. It's in the beginning. It's the same government. It's the same political system. It's the same program. And this is what the importance of postmodernist philosophy can give to our modern world. And you cannot get that in Aristotle. Because Aristotle just took for granted that others were barbarians, that the Greeks were human. He doesn't deal with issues of multiculturalism. He doesn't deal with issues of multi-ethnic identity. These concepts don't exist. They're created in the 20th century, coming out of the work for the Frankfurt School, which merged Freud and Marx, and being expanded through people like Butler. Okay, and Lacan and Zizek and other people who are grouped in the postmodern, that most of them would say they aren't, but that is what gave the movie its power. And I'd be interested in you finding an Aristotelian movie somewhere. Uh, I know Aristotle shows up in the Alexander the Great movie, but that was really crap.